This video is powered by the pros at Pascal Air Plumbing and Electric. Arkansas owned, Arkansas operated. GoPascal.com. Just, uh, I guess with just how everything happened, you know, you were hanging on, hoping some teams would lose to kind of make a way in. Just talk about your thoughts of not making the tournament, but yet getting some more games in, in, inside Bud Walton Arena. Um, taking me in order. Um, not getting in, you know, is always disappointing when you have – have been there because you know the difference and how it feels and uh, all that. But under the circumstances, you know, we we kind of went back and forth all day. It kind of started last week when you had the two major upsets when um, Gonzaga got beat, and then when um, oh, who was you know there was a couple of other ones in there uh, that were probably South Florida got beat. There were a couple of wrong winners that we knew would probably steal some at large bids. We knew we were going to be on the bubble just. You know, not necessarily because of what people on the internet say, but because of what we've tracked over the years. We knew it was going to be really close. Uh, you you get down and you you hope that you're strong in one of the areas that the committee is going to take uh, a lot of put a lot of stock in. And I thought it was really interesting. The very first question that the chair got was, you know, why did Stanford get the number one uh, seed over uh, over Iowa? And the immediate response was they had 20 top 100 wins. So obviously top 100 wins was the separator between the one and the two seed, which should have bode well for us. We had 10. Uh, there were some teams that got in with five uh, at large top 100 wins. There was one team got in with five and another one got in with seven uh, and two got in with just six. So I don't know if it, if the criteria changes uh, as you start looking at at large teams past the number one, number two, but you know, you're always going to find something to be frustrated about. I, I just told the team, you know, we'll, we'll talk about why we should be frustrated later. And I'll tell y'all, you know, we can go back and look at games along the way that could have made a difference. One possession games along the way. Uh, we're, we all know what those games are. We could have, we could have done things to not put ourselves in that situation. We'll address that in a couple of weeks. Right now we knew we were going to, when we saw, that we were the first team out of the SEC not in, that gets you the automatic NIT bid. It's an automatic qualifier. We won't probably know our opponent until really, really late tonight or maybe even as late as tomorrow if they do release the schedule all at once. Uh, but our group, uh, as a coach, you always want to gauge the interest level when it comes to the other tournament. And our kids were really excited to have the opportunity to play and really the the great opportunity to possibly host again and play in front of our fans in Bud Walton. We all know we used it as a springboard five years ago, you know, to, to build a little bit of momentum that second year and play into the NIT and build some momentum. So we'll approach it that way. Um, the last thing I'll tell you that I shared with the team is um, there's only three teams in this league who have qualified for the last five postseasons. Um, I'm using the COVID year. Nobody knows what would have happened in the COVID year, but anybody that had a 500 record or better would have been in the NIT. So using that little nugget, there's only three teams and we're one of them. The other two are South Carolina and Tennessee. So there's a, an awful lot to be proud of. I, I don't want us to look at the NIT as um, a, a lesser tournament. Uh, some people will try to convince us that that's the case. We'll stick together like we always do and know that we're playing in the postseason. Uh, and be proud of that opportunity. And then we'll learn from our mistakes later on. But right now we'll focus on uh, whoever shows up on that bracket. And that leads to my next question. You know, you know you've got a bunch of starters and, and players returning next year. But to be able to still play for players like Chrissy and Avery, that this is it for them, the, the mindset going into not just settling because you are in, in the W19. Yeah. Well, just making sure they have the facts. Um you know, when the last bracket was revealed, uh, there were still 22 minutes until 8 o'clock. We, we knew we were going to be here probably at the house. We watched it together at the house. Thought it was really important that we watch it, not not knowing whether we were in or out. Uh, I, I gave them 22 minutes to feel however they wanted to feel. Be be really, really pissed for 20, 20, 22 minutes. Uh, be confused. Be whatever. But at the end of 22 minutes, we're on to what's next. And, and that was at the NIT. So... Uh, I'll be interested to see how kids unpacked it, but I, I know for Avery and and Chrissy, Chrissy coming here, you know, specifically with an opportunity to play in the postseason, she walked out and kind of patted me on the back and said, let's go win this thing. And, you know, Avery was uh, over there as nervous as a long tailed cat in a room full of rocking chairs 
uh, with that music. Yeah, that music was so dramatic, and she was just is just amped up. And um, but 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 she knows she knows where we've been, what we've done, and um, I think their reflectiveness will will help the rest of the younger kids get through it. And and for them, it's an opportunity to practice some more, play some more, uh, be challenged some more, um, and, and give ourselves an opportunity to play in a tournament that that has a winner. And last thing for me, I guess, is just the disparity between the men's game and the women's game, where you've got one one team on one side of the hallway, eight and ten, automatic lock to get in the tournament. There was no doubt. And then you got your team, seven and nine, in just as deep of a conference that it didn't even make the first four out. What what do you say to yourself and your team to try to really, I guess, help that make it even better? I guess, yeah. In a way. <laughs> It's hard, you know, when you live in the same building like we do, uh, we've got a really close kinship. And, and we were pulling for our, you know, we always, that's the one thing about this group is they pull for our guys and they were hopeful that there would be some crossover. But the, the only similarity is, is stops that we share a building. We don't even use the same formula. The NCAA doesn't even use the same formula that the men use to to, fig, to figure net. Um, so you have to explain that to the kids. It, it's It's the same sport we share a building but it's a completely different landscape um i mean i looked i watched the men's bracket and you know i started seeing like am i right that um texas a&m was like a seven seed and and they were second in the league and and went to the championship game so i don't even begin to understand i would never but i i know our formula the best i can they don't share it with us but uh, it's frustrating for our kids not to to be able to compare those two. So I just try to educate them and let them know that it, it's, it's figured differently. Uh, but the fact that we live in the same building, it's hard for them to get it and understand it. Um, but um, you know, we'll, we'll be, we'll be big fans for, for our men in Des Moines and well, for those guys, they play Illinois first, I think. And then uh, in the Kansas bracket. So uh, we'll spend our energy working, preparing ourselves and cheering for them. Oh, God. Appreciate you coach. All right, man. Ethan. Yeah, just seeing some of those teams that made it, you know, from the 10-11 um, spots. I know West Virginia kind of shot up there to 10. Um, did you notice any kind of trends of things that you think the committee might have been um, looking at? Not yet, Ethan. Uh, you know, I've had – I'll, I'll have a better thought tomorrow. It, there may be a pattern. But, again, I'm going based on what the very first question that the committee was asked. It, it turned to top 100 wins. And I thought, well, that that should have been a good thing for us. So, I'll, I'll I'll listen to everybody. Uh, you know, we tried to build our schedule based on what they've told us in the past. Go out and schedule good teams. Schedule hard. We had 27 games against the top 150, which maybe is too many. I don't know. I'll, I'll I'll spend the summer evaluating all that and making sure we give our, our kids the best schedule we can. Um, but you do start. I will look at those 11 seeds first and do my best to try to match up what it is, what it was that we did or did not do. Uh, I'll seek out any opinions, any input I can get from anybody to to try to help us for the future. Uh, like I did say to our kids, though, just in very brief passing, we'll address it more in depth. We can keep ourselves from being in that situation. Uh, let's let's finish the game against Oregon. Let's um, you know let's let's do some things against the Ole Miss game. Let's do some things in Alabama. Let's do something differently at um, at LSU. Uh, let's win one of those really, really close games and see what happens. Um, so we know that there's things we could do that we could control and things that we can't. We'll try to focus on the things we can control, deal with the things that we can't. Um, there's always frustration. We were in this spot five, four years ago, I guess. No, five years ago when we were the on the debatable eight again. It's a little bit of a moving goalpost. Uh, you know, all the time, but we'll we'll do our best to figure out what separated Purdue, St. John's. I was really shocked Mississippi State fell to eleven. Um, so we'll do we'll do our best to to set, see what separated um, the teams that got in on those last seeds and the teams that that got left out. And of course, like a natural question, I think that comes to a lot of people's minds, just um, getting the team motivated. You know, after something so devastating like missing a missing the tournament um do you bring up you know the 
five years ago. I know Aaron was a red shirt on that team. Michaela was committed, so was of course watching what was happening. You bring up, you know, that that next year team had it not been canceled would have been destined for a pretty high seed. I think you do, and and not only you, you talk about yourself, you talk about Indiana. Indiana won the NIT a couple of years ago. Now they're a one seed. You know, Arizona won the NIT, and they went to the Final Four. Um, there are other there are other teams that. Use the that use the NIT and then went the other direction too. So you got to be you got to be realistic. You got to tell them what it's about. Uh, but judging by the way they handled uh, the the information, the news, uh, I was I was excited for practice tomorrow uh, because it was a let's get after it, let's go, let's go be that team that you know proves that maybe we should have been in. You know, go win that. If you go and you you lose your first or your second round, then there's not you don't really have much to talk about. You can't, you can't, you can't back it up if you don't go with that attitude. So, you know, the WNIT is a tricky thing because it's not necessarily seeded. A uh, few teams will have a seed line, but then it becomes very regional uh, from that point on. Um, so it doesn't necessarily mean that. I mean, your first round game could be against a team that's really good as well. It's not like the rest of the brackets. So, um, I, I, I will use Aaron. I will use Avery. And then we'll use all of our other stories, of, you know, coaches that have been in the situation just so we can have our kids, um, you know, not thinking too much, but but prepared. That's all I got. Thanks. All right. Anyone else? Hey, Mike, is it your expectation that you would play at home for several rounds? Do you have a preference beyond a couple of rounds? You know, it's tricky. I, it, it all comes down to availability and who you're playing and things like that. Um you know, most years you say, uh, yeah, let's let's host them all, um, you know, but that's asking an awful lot. I also know that we've played okay on the road this year. But for our fans, you know, I've had a number of people, even yesterday and last night, being out around a little bit, people saying, hey, we the only, only positive thing about making the NIT is we get to see you play again. So uh, I, I don't have any expectation. I haven't talked to uh, anybody yet. Uh, about it we were just going to wait and see so we'll get we'll get on the phone later tonight and tomorrow um but I would I would certainly think we'll have the opportunity to host the first round for sure and then a lot of that comes down to how well attended it is you know if your second round opponent drew a lot more the NIT is they're not part of the NCAA yet uh, I think they're headed toward that next year uh that's another difference uh, between us and what they do on the men's side um so we'll see where it goes, Brett. But I, I think the first one you can anticipate that, and then I think after that it's just kind of a wait. Bet and see. Online remains your number one source for all your sports betting this season. Everything from the NFL and bowl season to esports, you'll find the latest odds, team matchup info, player news, and game trends at Bet Online. Bet Online features live betting, free contests, and live scores for almost any sport or game imaginable. We're the fastest and easiest way to bet on all your favorite leagues and events. Head to betonline.ag to join and receive a 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. Make sure to use the promo code BELIEVE to receive your rewards. That's B-L-E-A-V. BetOnline, where the game starts.